Welcome to the Kinda Crunchy Podcast, where we talk about all things health and wellness. We can't wait for you to hear today's episode, so let's get to it. Hi guys, welcome to Kinda Crunchy. Um, We have a very special guest on this episode today. Um, We're so excited just to be talking about a topic that a lot of you have really mentioned that you've walked through or going through. Um, So we have Courtney Warday on. Um, She is a fertility dietitian and um, a registered dietitian and licensed medical nutrition therapist. Um, My personal connection is to her is that I have worked with her um, through my infertility journey back in, I think, 2022. Um, And I've always wanted to bring her on, but I didn't want to do it until I told you guys about infertility because then you're like, why is she working with her? Um, But she has so much knowledge on hormones, PCOS, fertility, and how just her faith and our faith can play a role into it too. Um, So we're just really honored to have her on this week, but I'm going to let her introduce herself, tell you a little bit um, about her, and then we'll get into some questions. Hi guys. Thank you so much for having me today. I'm really excited to chat with you. Uh, I'm Courtney Warday, and I have been married to my husband, Kyle, for eight years in June, which is crazy. It's gone by so fast. Uh, We have three little miracle babies, Earthside, and one little saint in heaven. Um, We have Ellie, who is six, Claire's three, and John is seven months. So um, as you said, Jensen, I am a fertility dietitian and uh, nutrition coach. And this is something I never thought that I would like do, but just through our own suffering, God has kind of glorified that and allowed me to really work with others, which I know I'll share more about with today. But as far as my hobbies go, I'm all about being in the kitchen. If I had a whole day to myself, I would just be creating recipes, cooking, baking, um, doing all the things. It brings me a lot of joy to be able to bring food, um, you know, just be able to create food for others. Oh, that's awesome. So I know it's probably a long story and I know I've heard it, but I know our listeners would like to hear um, just about your PCOS and fertility journey. You can give all the details you'd like, um, but just what has that looked like for you and your family through the years? Yeah, absolutely. So my husband and I, when we first got married, uh, I was about to start my dietetic internship. And so I um, <clears throat> just, we just decided to wait a couple months to chart my cycles and see what was going on. We ended up finding out I had low progesterone. Um, and then pretty much immediately the cycle, I started supplementing with bioidentical progesterone. We ended up getting pregnant uh, with our daughter, Ellie. Um, and I was in my internship throughout the entire pregnancy. So it was a little bit stressful and I ended up getting um, a really bad gut infection while I was pregnant. Um, <clears throat> and just in general, after Ellie's her first full year of life was very stressful. So um, my gut health was not in a good spot. Um, and then just a lot of stress. Um, I think that is kind of what led to where I am now. But we, when we decided to start trying again, you know, month after month, it wasn't happening. And I knew something was off because once again, we conceived so easily the first time. Uh, but my doctor was kind of as maybe some of your listeners <laughs> have experienced uh, really having more of a patient approach in the sense of waiting for a year. Um, And obviously I was a dietitian, but pretty much majority of my knowledge that I know now is all my own research. And so um, I have had the basis in schooling, but I did not know a lot of this information. And so at one point my doctor had me do an ultrasound and Um, was maybe looking for PCOS. I don't think I was necessarily ovulating regularly at that time. Um, And so ended up like, I remember the day I got the call that I potentially had uh, PCOS and I was just a mess. Um, And I was so worried about insulin resistance and all these different things. And, um, but what I learned through the process was that a diagnosis and some of these this journey is really empowering in the sense of making your body the healthiest that it can be and ultimately being able to glorify God with your body through that. Um, so we ended up, I ended up going to, um, maybe some of you guys have not heard of NAPRO doctors, but 
I ended up going to, um, I'm very blessed to live about 45 minutes from where um, the Pope Paul or the St. Paul Institute now um, is. And that's where NAPRO technology was created. And I was able to get in there and um, they immediately sent me or scheduled me for surgery and ended up finding out I had endometriosis, had that removed. And so here I am with a PCOS diagnosis and an endometriosis diagnosis. And I am just at this very low point of why is this happening? And, you know, asking God why, <laughs> all these why questions. Um, so then I ended up just researching, researching as what I do as a dietitian. I love to research um, and ended up finding all these amazing kind of more functional minded dietitians and just really encountered functional medicine um, and realizing that it what I was so attracted to was that it treats the whole person and not just here's your symptom, here's a Band-Aid or here's a medication. Like instead of instead, it's really digging deeper to see what's going on. And I really believe that kind of my triggers that led to my um, specifically my PCOS was my gut health. I mean, and endometriosis, honestly, gut health and stress were two really big things that I did not have under control. And even like trying to advocate to my primary care at the beginning of the journey, I was like, my stools are not normal. My stools are not normal. And he was like, it's fine. You're fine. And I just knew something was off. And so I think that's something that I am really passionate about teaching my clients too, is advocating for themselves and not taking no for an answer sometimes or finding a new provider that's going to actually, you know, really listen to you and dig deeper. Um, so through all my research, um, it was still after surgery about five months before we conceived. Uh, but I actually even started, felt a call to start my business prior to that. Um, we, I think I found out like the cycle that we conceived our little miracle Claire, um, that I started my business, but so Claire was conceived and she was a little Christmas miracle, which was just so the best. Um, she was born three days before Christmas and I'm like crying thinking about how joyful that, that was. And, um, even, yeah, then we ended up after Claire, we ended up conceiving again and, um, we lost our little baby. Sorry, I'm probably gonna cry. Um, we lost her at 18 weeks. Um, so this was very shocking to me and just kind of one of those things where um, I always was worried about how can I get pregnant, just get pregnant, just get pregnant. And um, this really helped me to realize like, it's not only just about allowing even my clients to get pregnant. It's more of how can we have a healthy pregnancy? We did a lot of testing and there's no explanation why we lost her. Um, but that has also given me a greater compassion for those who have lost a baby because it was probably like the most heart-wrenching experience. Um, but that's not the end of my story, which is really beautiful. Um, yeah, from then we ended up three months later conceiving John and um, had a healthy pregnancy and um, now he is seven months. So um, yeah, it's been quite the journey and lots of highs and lows. As you know, even Jensen, there's a lot of highs and lows in this journey, but um, ultimately um, that's where we are today. And now I get to walk with um, women and couples all the time and um, be able to help them on their journey, which I'm so grateful for now. Oh, thank you so much for sharing and being so vulnerable. I know our listeners, probably so many of them can relate to so many things you just said. Um, and I love what you said about really advocating for yourself. I mean, you said so many good things there, but like really making sure that you are seen and heard by your doctors. And, you know, if you're not, then you can find a new doctor because there are doctors specifically. I know I just started working with a NAPRO doctor and they really want to get to the root cause of your issues. It's not just putting a band aid on your hormone problems. It's working with your body, not against it. Um, so yeah, there's just, 
this journey is so hard for a lot of women, but mm-hmm. God really does bring a lot of beauty from it if you let him and you can just see how he's working in it. Um, yeah, it's it's a journey, but it's cool to watch just how the Lord can be seen through it all. Um, kind of want to dive into a little bit about, you said you were diagnosed with PCOS. I also have PCOS, so do a lot of our listeners. Um What would you say, and again, everyone's a little bit different, but what do you do daily to manage your PCOS? What are some habits that you've implemented that you've seen worked? Um, Just some tangible things that people can do if they are dealing with their PCOS on a more natural approach. Yeah, I think one of the biggest thing that the things that you can do if you know you have PCOS is just really focusing on balancing your blood sugar. And so making sure that you are you know, getting a protein, fat, and fiber at all of your meals. This just helps. um, Oftentimes when our blood sugar is imbalanced a lot, you know, throughout the day, um, this can just put our hormones out of whack. It can cause, you know, lead to insulin resistance. It can, um, and we, which is like a vicious cycle because oftentimes if you have insulin resistance, um, you also have high testosterone and it just becomes this kind of vicious cycle. And so I think doing that, I think um, making sure that you're eating kind of more of a fat and protein rich breakfast, I think obviously you still need carbs. Um, and I think that's a big misconception as well is just not, you know, having a very low carb diet. You don't necessarily need that. Um, and then I think stress can definitely be a big piece to my puzzle, like I said. Um, And so I think just trying as best you can to limit the stress that's in your control. There's stress that's going to be always out of your control, but really trying to find ways to, um, you know, lower your stress as much as possible um, throughout your day, I think can be huge. So those are two kind of big things that I work on and even just like gut health as well. Like I said, that's part of my journey. So specifically me. I try to um, do my best. It's not always easy with children, but to slow down and chew my food and um, focus on my gut health. I love all those tips. Now, I um, personally haven't struggled with PCOS, which thank God for that. Um, And I've been there to hear about Jensen's journey and many other women who have shared with us. Um, Something I'm really passionate about and the listeners here have heard me talk about so much is hormone health for women. And I know that that plays into um, a lot of fertility issues or can help optimize your fertility when you're in a good place with your hormones or, or trying to support them. So I was wondering, do you have any types of things you see that seem to cause hormonal issues among women today? I feel like there's many out there and I just kind of wanted to get your take on that. <laughs> yes, I think one really big one that um, I learned about during our journey is toxins, which I know you guys are really passionate about and you guys talk a lot about. Um, some people don't really understand how much toxin, environmental toxins and endocrine disruptors can really make an impact and wreak havoc on your hormones. Um, so that's one big thing. Another one I think is stress, like I've talked about. So many people are just go, 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 you know, we're like one thing from the next, we're just not stopping until we go to bed, then maybe we're not getting a good night's sleep. And sleep and stress can really cause a big, big thing on your hormones. So a lot of times I try to help clients like simplify their life as much as possible. And like knowing it's okay to say no. I mean, you don't have to just be this like boss babe who's like out there, you know, like, doing everything in the world, like maybe God just calling you to do a couple of things really well. And um, sometimes people do have to cut things out in order to help with that. Um, And then I guess the other thing is um, like in general, sometimes I see people aren't getting enough fat or enough carbs and they're maybe just not nourishing their bodies enough. And so those are kind of big, three big ones that I noticed as trends in my clients. I think that's great advice. We talk so much on here about 
having a healthy balance and that sometimes the simplest things can make the biggest impact. We were just talking about that the other day together, Jensen and I. And um, I love that mm. as a coach and as someone who's helping support these women through that, that you are advocating for that because a lot of times you'll go to a doctor or some type of practitioner and there's things they want you to add in or to do additionally. And it's, it's sometimes stressful. So to have someone that you can go to that's saying, you know what, maybe we just pull back a little, maybe we just try to relax a little more, rest a little better. Um, it's just so encouraging to know that there are practitioners out there doing that. And it's, it's great advice, and I'm sure has helped many women and hopefully will help our listeners listening here today. Um, when we talk about balance here too, a lot of times we talk about, you know, people can get so into this crunchy lifestyle that it becomes a stressor on them. So really, we are always preaching 80-20 balance of trying to make the best choices you can and then leaving that flex room for where you can't change things or just being okay with it. And so with the field you're in um, and being able to counsel and work with women, how do you find a balance between natural approaches versus medicinal approaches? What's that balance look like? I'm sure it's unique to everyone, but kind of what's your approach in that, that area? Yes. First of all, I do want to say that I a hundred percent agree. You know, we can't be perfect. And oftentimes when we're chasing perfection, uh, that can cause more stress and anxiety. So I a hundred percent agree with that kind of 80, 20, or just really in general doing the best you can and not stressing about the rest. Uh, but as far as the balance between, you know, medicine and natural approaches. Um, I always work with my clients and if, you know, we're not finding, like maybe we're finding success in, you know, less brown bleeding or let more mucus or, you know, some of these great biomarkers that are helping, um, or even labs are improving, but we're still not getting pregnant. Then I think it definitely, there needs to be, you know, digging deeper and maybe surgery is needed or some type of like medicinal, uh, approach is needed. But I think starting, if possible, um, just the, the approach I take, um, trying to be as natural as possible, looking at labs, looking at things, um, and being able to implement those natural approaches first. And if those things aren't working, then maybe something just needs to be removed um, from our body or needs to be changed medically. And that's um, the kind of approach that I take. Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I think that's wonderful. And I love that you have a balance there between the two. It's not all or none in either arena, but you're able to flex and balance and support the body naturally, but use medicine when it's helpful and necessary. And um, that's definitely like the mantra I take on. So I'm, I'm right there with you. <laughs> yeah. And I think honestly, um, you know, sometimes we need medication or need something especially while we're working on it naturally. So I find that the combination, um, you know, I don't think that like someone should just be seeing me or don't just seeing a doctor. I feel like the combination can really lead to um, the most successful outcomes for the client. Yeah, I know that I fell into the trap at first. Like I started like the whole crunchy lifestyle and I was like, I can't take any medicine. God designed my body. I got to do everything natural. And it was really hard for me to surrender that. Um, and then I kind of just came to like, I had that moment where I was like, the Lord did design doctors. He did design medicine. Mm -hmm. And I think, wow, I'm still going to work on all these things naturally. But on top of that, like if I need medicine, like that's okay. And there's a purpose and they can work together. And I love that like your approach is like, we're going to do both. We're going to work with our body, do the things naturally, but when we need medicine, we're going to use it. Um, kind of going into that. So your program, um, which I participated in that after you share about it, I'm going to share a little bit about my experience, but um, Abide in Me Nutrition, can you tell us what all it entails? How do you approach your clients? Um, because I'm sure we have some listeners who might honestly be interested that are walking through infertility. So if you could just share a little bit about what your program looks like. Yeah. So I created this program based off of what I wish I had. Obviously you guys heard my journey. So um it, during my journey, I craved a program like this. So I'm just hoping that, you know, this program can be able to fulfill that need that I, I wish I would have had fulfilled. Um, so really in my programs, there's four different components. Um, the first is a course because a lot of people who are going through, through infertility, they, they love to learn, they love to research. So just having that information, it's a lot of what is the, the, 
topic we're talking about, why does it pertain to fertility hormones and what do we do about it? I'm really big on why. If my clients don't know why they're doing something, what, like why are we going to continue? So um, that's like kind of the first aspect to get that evidence-based knowledge. So you're not just utilizing the doctor Google. Um, the second is kind of a one-to-one -one approach where I, t I listen to my clients. I'm, it's very unique that I'm able to have, you know, a good amount of time to be able to really hear my clients and listen to what's going on. You know, I ask them questions about their movement, their sleep, their stress, their gut health, um, looking at labs, looking at their cycles, their nutrition, um, and being able to kind of, from all that information I gather, create a customized, individualized nutrition and lifestyle plan that we're slowly having check-ins, you know, twice a month and being able to really implement these things and set goals, which ultimately my goal at the end of the program is that um, small little lifestyle habits have been created. Uh, so that's kind of that aspect. And then um, I also felt so alone during our journey and there, everyone around me was just getting pregnant so easily. And it was just really challenging for me and felt really isolating. And there was a really big emotional, um, I don't know if I want to call it burden, cross, I guess, of the journey. So having a community of women was really important when I built my program. So it is kind of more of a group program as well. You get kind of the individual and group. So we do meet once a week with um, the group and are able to really share uh, vulnerability, what you're struggling with, wins, and kind of what you're working on. Um, and then being able to kind of dive into the module of the week. And then kind of from there, there's also, I try to put people as Jensen knows <laughs> on as little supplements as possible, but there is still a need um, for certain supplements that kind of sometimes are maybe lacking in the diet. Um, so I do kind of have a, a personalized regimen as well. And then really any and all resources that you'd ever need to be successful, um, you know, with all the, the different things in the plan that you're, you're implementing. Um, so I'm there every step of the way. You know, I have a walkie talkie app that my clients are able to really talk to me at any time that they, they need. And I'm able to respond um, quickly so that they feel cared for and loved along the way as well and just guided throughout the whole journey so I really believe that like I've talked about finding the root cause of what's going on if you are struggling with infertility can be really important for successful outcomes so by kind of looking at those labs we're able to kind of maybe figure out what's going on and if I don't can't figure it out I'm off, I'm referring you know to a new napro doctor or sometimes I refer to counseling or cycle charting if a client isn't charting. So there is referrals out as well. Um, but ultimately, I guess I take a, as much of an abundance mindset as possible, where I'm not gonna, sometimes people think if I go see a dietitian, they're gonna say like, you can't eat your favorite foods, or you can't, um, you know, I'm gonna, you're gonna have to cut out dairy and gluten and all sugar and all these things. And obviously, we want to nourish our body as much as possible. But there are certain situations um, and I teach just my clients how to balance um, when they're at a social gathering. I don't want them to not be able to have a glass of wine or be able to have dessert. Like it's all about balance. Um, kind of like it sounds like you guys have a similar approach in that, um, but being able to find that balance as well. Mm. That's all so good. I'm going to talk for a bit now because <laughs> I just have to tell everyone about my experience with the program and how how it really did change a lot of things for me. And I think you said this and you said it so well, you don't, during this program, like these women did not feel alone. I did not feel alone. You go on these weekly calls and it's all these women who are struggling and it's so great to be able to just share like, Hey, this is a win that I had, or this is what I'm struggling with. And then you're like, Oh, me too. Um, something with infertility that I think women with infertility never want to say, but like when they meet someone that's also going through infertility, you're not glad that they're going through it, but it's like almost like this, ah, oh, like you get it. Like, I'm sorry you're going through this, but at least I, because when you're going through infertility, like you said, it looks, seems like everyone around you is just getting pregnant so easily. Mm -hmm. And then when you can find people to walk through it with, it is like just such a gift from the Lord. And I think those weekly calls were so, so beneficial. Um, but the whole walkie talkie one-on-one -on -one thing. If I had questions, which I had questions all the time or like, why is this happening? Or what should I be doing here? 
you were always so responsive. And I think that's cool because like when you go to a doctor's office, sometimes it's like you have to make an appointment and sometimes you're rushed in and out. And it just was a very individualized approach because every woman is so different. Every body is so different. All of our hormones are just so unique and we all have different situations. Um, So that was really cool to be able to have just that like literally instead of having to Google it and then listening to Dr. Google, being able to hear what you have to say based on what you know about me and my labs. Um, it's funny. One of the biggest takeaways, and there were a lot of takeaways from working together, and you were saying about gut health is you really were the one that kind of taught me to like chew my food, which that sounds so crazy, but you know, we're fast paced people. We go, go, go. And that did wonders for my digestion. And it's so funny how like sometimes the biggest changes are the free, simple things. Um, it really, it's so crazy. Yeah. Slowing down, not looking at my phone while I eat, just chewing my food, taking deep breaths before, um, did so much for digestion and digestion is related to gut health and gut health and hormones. It's all, all super connected. Um, but it was just really also cool to be able to have the faith aspect. I think it was just so beautiful. We would pray before each session and just like, you know, knowing that like, you can tell us to do all the right things in the world, but ultimately the Lord opens up our womb and when it's his timing, it's his time. So it was also just nice to have that perspective as well. Like, Hey, you're doing all the right things, but like, ultimately like it's up to the Lord and like, we just have to trust and surrender in that. Um, and that he's going to bring glory and beauty from the process along the way. Um, yeah. And I'll just say like the last thing I feel like you know, you were saying at the beginning of our episode how you just love cooking and you love the kitchen and you provided us with like all these recipes, all these fun meal ideas, ways to really balance our fats, our carbs, our proteins. Um, and it was just really cool to be able to have like that cookbook to like, and I still do recipes from that. And it's just, you make sure that your clients are super equipped to like, to do tangible things and they're not hard. They're not challenging. It's just simple ways that we can enhance our health, enhance our fertility for ourselves, for our family. Um, Yeah, I was really sad when the program ended because it was just so life-giving and again, just super encouraging to be able to like walk through it with someone that cares about you on an individual level, um, that, you know, knows the Lord, knows that the Lord is in control and then to really create that community of women. um, It's just a really awesome thing that I think if any women are going through infertility right now and you're seeing a doctor which is awesome like doctors we need doctors but I think on top of that like there are so many things you can do for your nutrition to help that and I think again it's that balance of the medicinal approach but also the functional approach um so this I just think would be so awesome for any women that are walking through this because we're not meant to walk alone yeah I love how you said just so many different things. And I'm so glad that you, yeah, the program was life changing. I think just inviting the Lord in, um, he, the Holy spirit kind of guides everything. And, and that's why I think, you know, part of why it is so life changing for so many women is, um, it's not only just like you're working on your body, but like the Lord is working on your heart Mm -hmm. in the program as well. Um, and so it's, it's just so beautiful for me to watch um, my clients transform. And like you said, those weekly meetings, they're not only life giving for you, but they are for me too. Um, and I always, it always is hard when my clients leave. I'm like, no, like I I do really develop, you know, a friendship with a lot of um, all of them really, because I walk with them and they allow me into such a vulnerable time of their lives and being able to, um, well, first of all, it's very humbling and honoring to be able to be a part of that, but just to be able to get deep as well with, with, uh, my clients because they, they are Christians. Um, and I think just that even in our meetings, being able to get deeper just because we all do faith is very important to all of us. Um, and we, yeah, we, I don't know how you could walk this journey without it really. Yeah. Oh, that's so good. Um, so you kind of answered, I was going to ask a little bit about more how your faith, but you kind of dove into how your faith plays a role. And yeah, I just love that, you know, we're, we're not alone in this. There are other women going through this as well, but just knowing that like the Lord is with us every step of the way and he sees us, he hears us. Um, and I, I always think to myself, like when, 
we do receive a miracle someday, praying that boldly that like how much more prayed for that is how much more like it's there's gonna be so much beauty from that because like it is gonna all be the lord yes i might have done this medicine or got this procedure or done this thing but ultimately like that direction was given from the lord and every good and perfect gift truly does come from above um so it's really cool to know that just like yeah you're utilizing you're, you know showing your faith to your clients and they're just you're keeping that at the center because it ultimately is it's what's in control um so um, yeah, and I always do say that God is the one in control. I'm never going to promise a pregnancy because mm-hmm. I'm not God. Yeah. He's the one who opens and closes the womb. But like you were saying, um, you know, I wish sometimes I, I look back and I'm like, well, my plan would have been, you know, we would have had Claire whenever, you know. Um, but ultimately, like, I still look at her to this day and I'm just like, oh, you are just my little miracle. And um I mean, they all are, all children are, but when you have a child after, you know, infertility, it's like the most special and beautiful thing. And it kind of even reminds me today, I was reading like the story of Lazarus and him being raised um, from the dead. And, you know, Jesus took two days or three days to be by himself and um, kind of just like, he could have easily just like done it instantly, but like the miracle is, it like stuck out to people more because he was like, dead for like four days you know um so I think like sometimes the waiting like the waiting always has purpose but sometimes you know we don't know who that's going to be brought bring back to the Lord you know maybe Mm -hmm. by your story or who you're going to be able to share your story with and help them in their struggles like you are now Jensen so um yeah it's it's all hard to understand but ultimately in the end he he knows what he's doing and he has perfect timing um, wonderfully said. So it's been really exciting for me to be able to just kind of listen to this conversation and meet you today, Courtney. I know you and Jensen have worked together in the past and and know one another and have worked together, but just to kind of um, be a part of this conversation as someone who uh, I'm currently trying to avoid conceiving and have been for a few years. My husband and I aren't in that stage yet where we want to have kids, um, but I still want to Um, try to support my body hormonally and health wise and dietary wise and all the ways that when that day comes that we are trying to conceive that I'm hopefully in the best healthiest place possible to support a pregnancy or be able to get pregnant. And so um, while we have you here, we want to tap your brain for just a few tips and things since you are an expert in this area. And it's, it's so great to have you on. Um, We were wondering if our listeners here who are listening to Kind of Crunchy um, could do three things to help optimize their hormones or improve their hormones, what would you recommend? Like what would be the top three things they could do for hormone health? I feel like I kind of mentioned this, but I want to hone in on them because they are very important. I think reducing your toxin load as much as you can is huge. Doing what you can that's in your control with your stress and balancing your blood sugar. If I had three top tips, those would be my three um, for hormone health, honestly. Yeah, we've we've definitely talked about toxins on here, blood sugar, all of that. I think um, as someone listening to that having you as a resource, which we're going to link Courtney down below and everything, if if something like balancing your blood sugar or reducing that toxin load is something that's completely new to you and you're like, I could really use some help, that would be an awesome resource for you to go to, Courtney or someone like her. Um, but I mean, she comes highly recommended by Jensen. So uh-huh. I definitely say Courtney um, to kind of help kickstart you on the journey of really knowing what to do and what works and what doesn't versus just getting online and being overwhelmed by all that info. Um, so those are great tips. Thank you. Another thing we wanted to tap your brain about, um, and me as someone who in the future does want to have children, like Lord willing that I'm able to, um, what's your best trying to conceive advice for anyone out there? Is there, is there one thing or what would your top tips be your advice on that? Definitely. I think the first thing I would recommend is tracking your cycle so that you know, maybe, you know, like you're, Rachel, you're not in a spot right now where you're wanting to, or you're desiring to conceive. But if you could track your cycle right now, and maybe there are some things underlying that maybe you could 
figure out um, in the meantime while you're in that while you're not you know in the trenches of potentially infertility because some sometimes clients will come to me and they and they don't know how to track their cycle and I think that's a really big one. Um, I think also um, another one <clears throat> I would recommend is getting labs drawn, um, just because like, once again, especially if you're you know going to be trying to conceive in the next three to six months, um, I think getting labs drawn just to see what is maybe going on in your body to kind of help really optimize it in that way, I think is big. Um, I think working with a health provider, healthcare provider that you trust. And um, I mean, I'm obviously biased, but I really do think nutrition has a major role. So working with a dietitian, I think can really bring about a lot of success too, and just help you to prep your body. Because like I said, we don't want to just get pregnant. We want to have a healthy pregnancy. We want to have a healthy baby and beyond. Um, so really focusing on your nutrition, I think can be really big. And then ultimately, I think just like entrusting your journey to the Lord, like we've talked about and trying to kind of surrender his timing, I think can bring a lot of peace. Um, and then lastly, I guess, if you are currently trying to conceive, I think just trying to really enjoy this time with your spouse. Because I mean, obviously, when children come in the mix, it's absolutely beautiful and glorious chaos sometimes but it's um you know getting that special time with your spouse is really um just also really beautiful so just really trying your hardest to enjoy I know oftentimes it can be easy to just try to go and look at the future but staying in that present moment right now and doing things that you love right now can um kind of also just help you to really enjoy this time I love that advice. Um, I think there's always such a balance there of like, I I have a whole list for, you know, in the future when we want to conceive, I'm like, okay, a year out, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go get my labs drawn. I'm going to do this type of dietary stuff, try to really optimize my hormones, like my pelvic floor, all these things. And then on the other end, I'm like, but also like I need to leave room for God and his will and yeah. things to happen on their own and not be to dwelling on this yes. because that's going to cause stress on my body. So it's always that balance of, um, I try to think about it as, you know, Jensen and I both were runners in the past. We both did like long form races, like marathons and stuff. And, you know, when you have a race like that, you have to train for it to do your best and, and you have to be thoughtful about it, but there is some, some bit of just trust in God and in your body yes, and your ability that you're going to be able to do it because you don't necessarily run the 26 miles before you go do that race. You just train these certain miles to get there. And so I equate that to um, hopefully in the future, my, my fertility journey being, you know, I'm going to do as much as I can to try to prep and prepare my body, like you said, all the ways, but then leaving room for God in there and trusting and knowing that uh, he is good and, and he's going to work it out. And um, yeah, I just, I love everything you said. Those were awesome tips. <laughs> Yeah, thank you. And I 100% agree. Because sometimes if we think that it's all on us, then I mean, we can become really like, perfectionistic about it. And that is not good. <laughs> we you know we have to do like you said, do what you can, but then let can let God do the rest because he allows us to be active participants in the fertility journey. But he's ultimately, once again, the one who opens and closes the womb. So we just have to trust that he knows what's best for our family and for us. And I find a lot of times or in our journey, there was a lot of healing that I had that happened during our journey that, you know, that's, I, I know that that was part of the purpose of the time that was there. So good. Um, first off, Rachel, I've never heard that you say that analogy before. I love that little <laughs> marathon analogy. So good. Um, Courtney, thank you so much. I feel like those like past those last tips you said there, I like knew all those things, but like throughout this journey, you constantly need that reminder of like, you know, we can do all the things we want. It's in the Lord's hands. Um, and yeah, even just like, I know for me, like we're really trying to just enjoy this time, Logan and I, and it can be hard because you're like, uh -huh. oh, we want a baby, uh -huh. but also like, you know what? We're not going to stop living our lives. Like if the Lord has not blessed us yet with a baby, like we're going to travel, we're going to do things. And you know what, when the time comes, we're going to look back and say like that waiting season was not a wasted season and just yes. continuing to let God move. Um, and again, 
sharing our story. I know it's like, it was like kind of hard to open up about this at first, but since I have, like it has sparked so many good conversations with Christ at the center and just knowing that like, you know, I know he's looked like the Lord is like Jensen, like, yes, you're waiting, but like, there's so much good and glory coming from this. Like it's going to be worth it. So, um, yes, thank you for the, all those tips and advice. Um, the last thing I'm going to say is, is there anything else, Courtney, you want to talk about anything with hormones, PCOS, fertility, just anything you want to leave our listeners with? Um, you've said so many great things, but just want to open that up. If you have anything else you want to say. Yeah, when I was kind of praying about this, I, I, what came to my mind was just kind of our relationship with our bodies when we go through infertility and I know, or even PCOS or hormones. Um, I know this might, I mean, I think it relates just kind of like trusting your body, kind of like we're talking about too, because I feel like when you're going through a journey like this, it's easy for you to feel like your body has failed you, like your body's broken um, or like why isn't my body doing what it's supposed to? And it can lead to this kind of um, negative view of your body. And so I think just kind of, I don't know, kind of recognizing like, or reflecting on that. And like, how is my relationship with my body? Do I feel like my body is capable of conceiving? Um, Do I feel, do I trust that God, like, you know, can do this? Do I feel like my body can do this? Because I think sometimes we can just be like, well, my body's broken. Like, you know, and like have this kind of negative self-talk. And so I think um, having just that going to prayer maybe with that and thinking about like, where is it um, with my relationship with my body? Like where do I have maybe some negativity there and try to kind of focus um, on more like positivity and gratitude with, with even within your relationship with your body, which might sound weird, but that's kind of just what was coming up when I was, was praying because I know I walk with my clients and that is an aspect that they struggle with. So well said. Yes. I've had those thoughts. So totally get it where you're just like, Oh, my body, it's supposed to, why isn't it doing what it's supposed to? Um, but knowing that, like, I think we, I think Rachel and I talked about this on like our last episode or one of the episodes recently where we said like our bodies want to heal, like our bodies, like God designed our bodies to heal, to function. And like, yes, we live in a broken world. We have broken bodies, but ultimately like our bodies want to move toward healing. So just totally trusting in that and knowing that like your body isn't working against you, even though sometimes we can feel like it is. Yeah. Ultimately when you're having these symptoms, when you're having, you know, this happening, um, it's just your body speaking to you Mm -hmm. and ultimately it's your body protecting you and protecting a future child. You know, you would, rather be waiting to get pregnant than get pregnant and then, you know, lose the baby. Obviously that baby is still a life and has purpose and a mission, but ultimately, you know, it, your, our desire is to get pregnant and have a healthy pregnancy. So sometimes our body is protecting us as well. Mm. Absolutely. Well, that was also wonderful. I feel like our listeners are just going to soak up this episode and this is going to be so helpful to so many people um, out there who are struggling with fertility issues. And even those who aren't that just want to prepare their bodies in the future or at this time um, to optimize their fertility. So um, I can't thank you enough for coming on. It was, it was a pleasure to get to hear from you and meet you today. Um, Yeah, Jensen, anything you want to add? (laughs) No, I'll just kind of close us out. I just want to say, Courtney, thank you so much. I I know I feel just so encouraged and uplifted from just talking to you right now. And I know our listeners, I I just know like when I've listened to like podcasts on like infertility and stuff, like the whole time I'm just sitting there, I'm like, yes, yes, you get it. I don't feel alone. And I know that so many of our listeners are feeling that right now. To our listeners, if you guys are looking to – you know, get some help along your fertility journey more than just doctors. I think it's so important to really focus on fertility and nutrition. Um, and it was so beneficial for me. So we will link all of Courtney's information below. Um, if you have any questions, you can, we'll put her Instagram, you can message her, you can even message me about it. Um, but cannot recommend her enough. She is amazing. And again, Courtney, we just want to thank you for taking the time out of your Saturday to speak with us and our listeners. I know that The Lord has been glorified and I'm sure people are just feeling so encouraged. So thank you again. Yes. Thank you so much for having me. It was definitely a joy to be able to share my heart and some of my knowledge with your listeners. 
Well, thank you guys for being here today. Um, as always, make sure you subscribe, leave a review, all the things we ask you to do each week. We just thank you for being here. Um, and we hope you all have a great day and we will see you next week. Bye, guys. Bye. Remember, although we talk all things health and wellness here, this is not medical advice and you should always seek out your medical professional for further questions. Thanks again for listening. Please remember to share, comment, and subscribe to help support our podcast.